What's up everybody, it's Rank Creates, and today I'm bringing you guys a video on all glitches you can do in Dark Souls Remastered in 2022 and hopefully above. It's very unlikely that these glitches will get patched as they seem to still be working and some of them that we have in today's video actually go and date back as far as the original from 2011. So that's going to be very interesting today to take a look at. Phobia made a video very similar to this, however, I'm here to build off even more than his. That's right, I'm taking it one step up because I'm including even more glitches than that were in his video. If you haven't checked out Phobia already, great gamer. You definitely should go and check him out and hit him up with a subscription, especially if you're subscribed here. But enough with that being said, you guys came here for the glitches. I'm here to bring to you guys today glitches that you can still do in Dark Souls Remastered in 2022. Let's get into it, starting right now. Whoa, before we start, there's actually two other things I gotta mention before we actually begin today. The first is that there's gonna be timestamps for any glitch you might wanna do in the description below. And the second is that we're actually going in chronological order or the best chronological order I could make for this list of glitches. So I hope that is a bit convenient for you guys who are just going through the game trying to do some glitches. Okay, now let's begin. So the first glitch we can do is starting right out in the beginning of the Asylum. In the Northern Asylum, you can actually perform a glitch that allows you to skip, skip the Asylum Demon. This glitch is very simple actually. Believe it or not, I don't even know how this hasn't been found out faster because of how easy it is to do. What you have to do is make sure that you pick the Black Firebombs as your starting class. Make your way and progress through the Asylum as usual. However, what you're going to want to do differently is once you've used all your firebombs to kill the Asylum Demon, before the Victory Achieve screen happens, you need to make sure that you quit out right away. As soon as you kill him, out. Then quit out, go back in, and then you're going to want to go through and do everything you just did over again. However, don't kill the Asylum Demon this time. And then you guys are going to talk to Oscar, who is going to give you the Big Pilgrim's Key, which you would usually get if you were to kill the Asylum Demon. But no. Now you can go, jump down, and open up the door. Congratulations ladies and gentlemen, let's give the Asylum Demon a round of applause because he is the worst prison security guard for any Asylum in the history of forever. Now that we're in Lordran, what we're going to do now is we're going to actually perform a glitch, that's right, an Infinite Souls glitch that's going to allow us to get Infinite Souls and Humanity on every platform right at the beginning of the game. All you have to do is rack up about 3,000 souls, make your way to Undeadburg, Make your way down to the Undead Merchant, and from the Undead Merchant, you're going to buy 999 Wooden Arrows. You're going to need these for this glitch because you need to show a quantity of 999, because we're doing a value swap here. And basically, this glitch is going to allow us to trick the game into giving us 999 whatever soul item we use. Keep in mind, this cannot be done with boss souls, though. So what you're going to do is you're going to first go over, it doesn't matter which one you do first, just make sure you do both of these. You're going to go to your wooden arrows, you're going to go to drop, and then you're going to show the quantity of 999 to drop those wooden arrows, but you're not going to drop them. Instead, you're going to back out, and then you're going to go back over to your items and your inventory, and you're going to set whichever soul item you want to use to the top. Keep in mind, you must have one soul item, or one humanity, or one twin humanity, whatever you're duping here. You cannot have multiple copies on you at a time. If so, drop them. Make sure that there's no enemies around or invaders, or you're offline. Whatever you got to do to not have yourself screwed over. And then, once you've shown the quantity of 999 wooden arrows, and you have your soul item at the top of your inventory, you're now going to go over to your settings. From your settings, you're going to go down to the brightness, and you're going to press whatever your select button on your controller is. If you're on PlayStation, it's going to be cross. If you're on Xbox, it's going to be A. If you're on Nintendo Switch, it's also going to be A. And then whatever your keybind for select is on PC or keyboard and mouse, you know how the deal goes. But basically, when I refer to select, it's that button. So... What you're going to do, you're going to press select and then R1 almost directly afterwards. Okay, so if you do it correctly, it's going to show up the screen that's going to have your brightness settings, but then underneath it, it's going to show your inventory, which your so I am should be selected there, or at least hovered above. Once you've gotten here, you're going to press select. You're going to press down and right on the D-pad at the same exact time. And once you're here, you're going to go over to the right and press select. Now if you do it correctly, it should ask you for what the quantity is you want to drop. Here you're going to press down your d-pad to show 999. And when you show 999, you're going to go over press OK, and bada bing bada boom like that, 
you just hit up the bank and got a loan real quick and easy and you could do this with humanity and twin humanities as well however keep in mind if you do end up messing it up or for some reason it ends up saying if you want to reset your brightness settings you have to go back and do it all over again and before you guys go in the comment sections and ask oh it doesn't work what am i doing wrong make sure and make sure now mess this up and you go back and do it again make sure that you show the quantity of 999 wooden arrows on the screen before trying to attempt to do the dupe again but now we've done that let's go ahead over to sen's fortress wait sen's fortress so now it's time to do sen's gate skip that's right we're skipping the gargoyles and quailag and we're going straight to sen's fortress so sen's gate skip you likely have seen if you watch dmod dark souls remaster in under 45 minutes I'm sure you've seen it by now. He used that glitch in here, and we're going to be doing it too. It's actually pretty easy. So, what you have to do is first make your way to the Undead Parish. From the Undead Parish bonfire, you know, the one that has Andre underneath it, you're going to go up the stairs, and you're going to come over and kite out one of the hollow soldiers. The third pillar from the bottom on the stairs, and left or right, doesn't matter. I prefer going to the left if I can, though. And what we're going to do is you're going to line it up exactly how I have it here without any weapon in your right hand you don't want a weapon in your right hand you want to make sure that it is your fist weapon as long as it's your fist weapon what you have to do now is parry and when you repost your foot should go out of bounds which is going to put you in the death cam mode. in a death cam mode the controls are going to be pretty wacky wonky it's going to take a bit of getting used to especially if you're on controller with the analog sticks but you're just going to make your way and navigate all the way down. Now keep in mind, the Hollow Soldier does try and attack you. You can indeed do all the normal functions you can in regular mode when you're in death cam mode. So you can kill him if you want. But what we're going to do is once you've killed him, if you have to, you're going to walk down the stairs. And you're going to have to get a feel for where the bonfire is at. You'll see because it'll show the option up on the screen. You're not going to rest at the bonfire though. What you're going to do is you're going to walk along the edges. Don't go down too far though because you might end up walking down the other set of stairs. Which you don't want to do. What you want to do is walk outside and go all the way to Sen's Fortress. You'll know you'll get to Sen's Fortress because once you walk outside of the other area of the Undead Parish, you're going to be walking down this long, long path, but eventually you'll see some pillars and then the Sen's Fortress logo will appear up on the screen. When this happens, you're going to want to quit out, load back in, and bada bing, bada boom, there you go. You are now in Sen's Fortress and you have successfully done the Sen's Gate Skip. What about Quaylag? So Quaylag skip is very interesting because in the original version, you kind of could do this cool hardcore parkour type of glitch where you could utilize the death screen and we are going to be utilizing the death cam mode for this glitch. However, we're not going to be doing the parkour because I found it to be very difficult. Instead, we're going to be using the one where we have to break a pot that actually puts us in the death cam mode, which is interesting enough. So what you got to do to perform this glitch, which is very easy, is you gotta make your way down to blight town make your way to the swamp and then you're gonna go left from the bonfire tunnel area thingy and you're gonna make your way up the other wooden pathway i don't know really what it's called not important though you're gonna go through kill the enemies kill the bugs if you got any of them on you watch out for the toxic spewing guys with the um blow darts very annoying i recommend taking them out before doing this glitch because you're going to have to. If you get toxic, you're kind of done for. But you're going to make your way up these ladders. And eventually you're going to get here. Now what I found most effective doing is killing the bloated firefly enemy things. And then you're going to use this weird, weird pot as a reference. The big one. And what I like to do is walk around in a circle. Run and jump right at the pot. And then that's going to break that pot. But not break the second one. You want to make sure that you quit out as soon as you go through the roll after you do the jump. And then you're going to want to go back in. And if you do it correctly, when your character gets up, it should break the second pot in front of you. But even if it doesn't, that's all good. You can always punch it. I also recommend getting rid of the other pot as well if you have to, too. But you're going to take little, little baby steps. And when you do it correctly... The death cam will show up as soon as you step in it. When you step into the death cam area, it's extremely important that you press the roll button and nothing else so that you just jump right back out of it. Because if you go too far or linger in it for too long, it will kill you instantly. And yes, you're going to be in death cam mode. So again, your controls will still work. You'll still have all your functions except for the analogs being all wonky and jonky. 
But once you've done this, now you're going to walk all the way down to this point and you're going to jump off. I like to do meme rolls if you can, which we will get to in a bit later down in the video. But you're going to jump down from here. And this is where it gets really, really confusing. I really wish I could show this to you a bit easier. But you're going to keep making your way up across the swamp. Since you're in death cam mode, you don't got to worry about the swamp catching you. But you are still going to get poisoned, unfortunately. Which we can put up with. But the right side is a bit more forgiving since there isn't as many of those trolls that throw the freaking giant boulders at you. And you're just going to keep making your way into Quaylag's domain. Now when you get into Quaylag's domain, it's very important because you can't accidentally trigger the boss fight, which is gonna lead to some big complications. But what you're trying to do is once you get into Quaylag's domain, you're gonna wanna try to make this right turn at kind of this horizontal angle and keep walking outside where the giant jagged tree branch thingies are at. And you're gonna keep walking that way. You're gonna wanna go pretty far Unfortunately, it's very hard to really explain this. So instead of me showing it, I'm actually gonna put a video up on the screen right now of somebody else. Just go over that, because it's way more simpler than mine. But basically, he takes this path and he drops these arrows, which is pretty smart to be honest. And as he's dropping these arrows, what he's gonna do is he walks all the way and takes another turn. And I do think the direction reserve is very smart indeed. Thank you, sir. But we're gonna run all the way up. And it, figuring out if you're there or not is kind of difficult. I really just got lucky with the guesswork, but I do pull it off for myself, which is nice. In all honesty, I think as a glitch, it's cool, but I wouldn't really do it any other way, legitimately, because I don't see a point in it. It's so tedious and difficult, unless you're doing a pacifist run. Doom. So did you ring both of the bells? If you haven't, go ahead and go to the gargoyles and F them up real quick and then make your way over to Firelink Shrine because we're going to do another soul duplication glitch. That's right. Not one, but two soul duplication glitches in this video. The first one worked on all platforms. This one only works if you have a mouse and keyboard available to you. Preferably a mouse though because you must have a mouse to do this glitch. This glitch has a bit of preparation beforehand so let's cover that really quickly. First of all, you gotta have Framped available. The second prerequisite is that you need to get the Bottomless Box. You can buy this from the Undead Merchant for a thousand souls, or from Zena for a thousand souls, or whatever his name is, I don't know, Dom Hall of Zena. Not a big deal, just buy the Bottomless Box. That's what matters. And then once you've done that, you're going to set the Soul of Quelag to the very top of the box. If it is not your top item and there's another item on top of the Quelag Soul, you need to make sure the Quelag Soul is number one and that you only got one of it. You follow me? Good. Because this glitch actually allows you to not only duplicate souls, humanity, twin humanities, but also other consumables and covenant items, which is pretty badass. And oh yeah, you can get infinite divine blessings too. What you gotta do to perform this glitch is it's not that difficult but it is gonna require your mouse. And this one could take you a few tries, but let me tell you guys right now, it does work. You just gotta be a bit patient. Practice makes perfect, nothing different here. So to pull up this glitch, you need to make sure, you need to make sure that your Quaylag Soul is at the top of your inventory and that you have not one, but two of any type of Titanite or upgrade material. Doesn't matter what it is, you just gotta have two of it in your inventory at the top. I like Titanite Charge just because they're easy, but you can have more if you want. So once you have your materials hovered over, you're going to want to take your mouse and you're going to put it to the bottom left hand corner of the arrow to the left that will take you over to your inventory. And this is very important, so listen up here. Okay, so the timing of this one's extremely specific, so let's get into how to do this. You're going to click with your right click on your mouse and you're going to press the select button almost immediately afterwards. Like, as soon as you see the inventory screen come up, you're gonna click your select button on your controller or your keyboard. If you do it correctly, this screen will appear. Now, you wanna press down on your D-pad, and if it shows the same quantity that was in your upgrade materials, press OK. Now, instead of actually eating your soul, what's gonna do with your Quaylag soul is instead, you're gonna get a quantity of 99 of them. Now, don't go and get them or anything. What you wanna do here is go to your Quaylag Soul and feed 98 of them to Frant. 
Badoom. 908,000 souls, really quick and easy. From there, keep in mind, you could do this with both Divine Blessings, Covenant Items, Humanity, pretty much almost every consumable that's finite, you can do it with, which is absolutely amazing for anybody that plays on PC or console. As for Nintendo Switch, guys, yeah, sorry. You're kind of left out here. But do not fret, because I have one that we all can do in our next glitch. I'm kind of on the fence about this one, but as you make your way through Sense Fortress, there is a way to skip the Iron Golem and shoot yourself way over to Honor Lundo. Now, I tried doing this multiple times, and every time I kept ending up in the middle of bumfuck nowhere, falling down endlessly into a pit. And this pit goes on forever, so unless you have a cheat engine, you're kind of stuck here. Now, in order to do this glitch, you need to have a specific type of weapon. I highly recommend using a great axe or an ultra great sword. I'm gonna use the great sword, great sword for this, but you can also use the great axe too. Any weapon that has this type of moveset with an overhand swing should work, but these are the two safest options for the time being. Now, what you guys are gonna notice as soon as we get into the Iron Golem boss fight, what you're gonna have to do is get in between the Iron Golem's legs, and you're gonna wanna kind of bait his grab attack his grab attack is what we're trying to go after here that's the bait but what you must make sure you're doing is that your back is faced directly towards the wall that is going to send you over to Anor Lundo. if not you're going to end up in bumfuck nowhere and that's not fun for anyone as you're baiting his attack this is the important part when he's about to do his grab attack you're going to do your running r1 and you want to make sure that the top of your weapon is hitting right past his left leg his left by the way not ours and if you do that correctly it'll send you all the way to on orlando now as far as many times as i've done it i haven't gotten it to work i've only been sent to bumfuck nowhere but since it is still technically glitch and it does work i'm sure if you guys try this enough you might get it to work but credit goes to our boy up on the screen thank you so much for sharing really was great happy that you were able to pull it off so believe it or not there's actually two glitches for the orange science snow boss fight in on orlando is we're going to be breaking orange science snow's ai in phase one that's right we're going to basically make phase one a complete utter joke so what you have to do first is take out these two giants right in front of the fog gate because you're going to need to kite the silver knight at the top and you're going to need to bring him all the way to the fog gate with your back up against it. Remember Sen's gate skip? We're going to be doing something a little bit similar to that with the parrying mechanic here. So, get your back to the wall, put up a shield because he's going to be swinging that sword hack and slashing at you. And you're going to want to make a time parry that's going to end up leaving one of your foots into the boss arena, which is going to activate the boss fight. And then you're going to end up going back outside the boss arena after the repost. And you're going to want to run all the way to the bonfire. And you're going to rest at the bonfire. And this is going to like reset the AI. We're going to make our way all the way back to the boss fight. And what do you know? They're both down. So you can kill whichever one you want. If you want to make it easier, go and kill Ornstein. But kill Smo, whichever one does your fancy. And there you go. Now there is another glitch we can do. So how do we do the magic swap glitch? So the magic swap glitch is very helpful for weapons that cannot usually be buffed because we can actually buff weapons with magic weapon that usually couldn't be buffed such as the stone greatsword to make the giant popsicle of death or other weapons that can't usually be buffed like say the black knight greatsword for example but what we're going to be doing here is this glitch can take a bit of time to actually pull off so if you don't get it right away don't get too frustrated once you got it down though, you'll be able to keep popping it off like a pro. So, how do we do it? What you're gonna do is make your way over to any type of staircase. As long as you got about this much of a gap in between you and the ground, you're fine. And what you gotta make sure is that your stone greatsword is not out yet. Is we're first gonna try and use our great magic weapon with the talisman. It's not gonna work, obviously. But then, we're gonna switch to our other spell and to our stone greatsword and we're gonna walk off the ledge. When we walk off the ledge, that's when we're gonna press L1 in this case. If you do all that correctly, as soon as you touch the ground, it should use the spell 
and for some reason, oddly enough, it actually buffs your weapon with the magic weapon, or great magic weapon as I'm using here. And you can basically use your giant pop school of death to go and bring havoc to Ornstein's Mo. So, to do this out of bounds glitch, what you're going to have to do first is this can be done with two bosses. Ornstein and the centipede demon. Now, Ornstein, it is possible, I'm sure, you just need to be extremely patient. Um, you have to get him in the exact right position. It's very difficult to really be worth doing, in my opinion, because it's a lot of waiting. You gotta get him in the exact right position, right, right next to the window. And you have to be facing at the same time when he does the attack, as you can see here, Phobia is doing it. Unfortunately, again, you need to be super duper patient, and for me, it's just really difficult. But instead, I will show you guys the Centipede Demon one. A centipede demon glitch is a lot more easier as all you have to do is once you enter the boss fog you gotta go to a corner i recommend going to the corner on the left and then you just gotta turtle up behind the shield and just tank out his attacks you want to make sure that you tank out all of them and then he's gonna do his grab attack which just like ornstein and when he does his grab attack he's gonna actually take you out of bounds and when you go out of bounds and come back in bounds he's gonna be shoved out of bounds just be patient because it's going to take a bit for him to fall and die. I know, I know, we took it a bit too far with the centipede demon, but let's back it up just a little bit because we're going to do the fire sage demon skip. And yeah, you can do this one pretty easily, just with a bit of patience. Right before the fire sage demon boss fight, you're going to walk down the stairs and to your left, there's going to be a giant centipede. Make sure you kill all the other weird fire breathing monsters and then you're going to get into this exact position. Here, you're going to basically bait out his chomp attack. And I recommend using a shield and have it in your right hand without two-handing it. You're going to want to make sure you're one-handing your shield. I think the shield's easier than having to use a halberd or something like a pole weapon. And you're going to make the timing exactly just right. What you have to do is attack as soon as he starts to open his jaw, claw, face thingy, whatever that thing is. And he's going to open that up. As soon as he opens that up, you're going to press R1. And then your shield is going to bonk. And it's going to collide with his grab attack. And then that's going to clip you down through the ground. And right above the centipede boss fight. Now, be careful where you land here. Try to follow my steps. Because you don't want to end up falling down and landing in the lava and then end up dying. So, what we're going to do here is you're going to walk around. And you'll know where to go because this rock here is going to be kind of signifying and identifying where exactly you're at you want to be right next to it and then you're going to walk forward a little bit then you're going to make a left you're going to keep walking left until eventually you make it to around this spot this is the safest spot in my opinion to fall down because right from there you'll fall down and then you'll be ready to go and yeah then from there if you want you could do the glitch earlier i showed you where we killed him by taking him out of bounds so, two for the price of one. Pretty cool. Meme rolls, baby. So, meme rolls, I mentioned this earlier. If you watched Dmod's video on how to beat Dark Souls Remastered in 45 minutes or less, you might have remembered him doing meme rolls to basically skip a lot of the Royal Wood and make it very quickly to the Artorius boss fight. And we can do that here too. But, how do you do meme rolls? Well, in order to do meme rolls, is you must get to a specific equipment load percentage. I have calculated to be 27% of your equipment load. That way, you're still mid-rolling, but the specific mid-roll you're doing has just enough iframes to where it re-triggers another roll in mid-air and you just keep doing that until you run out of stamina or you hit the ground. And you're going to want to get to whatever ledge you want to get to. You're going to be at the bridge bonfire at Blighttown. And what we're going to do, you're going to get your equipment load to 27%, and then you're going to push your left analog stick forward while button mashing the roll button, and then you guys are going to see we're going to be put into death cam mode, and then we're going to make our way all the way to the bottom. And once you hit the bottom and you know you're there and you're safe, quickly quit out, and then go back in. And then once you go back in, congratulations, you've successfully done the meme rolls. Now on to the final glitch. So, did you know you can actually make your way to the kill in the first flame early? That's right, you do not need to kill the other four bosses to get to the kill in the first flame and fight Gwyn. So, what must you do? 
Well, first of all, you're going to have to have the Lord Vessel, and you're going to need to make sure you place that. Then, once you place that, you're going to want to make sure that you go over to the DLC and defeat Knight Artorius. Once you've defeated Knight Artorius, go to the Battle of Gazebo, enter it to get the Purple Coward's Crystal, and then go back out and enter Ulaseal Township. From here, you're going to want to make sure that you have one of your shields, or really any weapon, but a shield's the best. I like to use the Grass Crest Shield in your right hand. And that you have the Purple Coward's Crystal, your Estus Flask, and your Dark Sign. Or I believe you can use Homeward Bones, but I like to use the Dark Sign just to be safe. Because that's a traditional way. In this specific order. Once you've done that, we're going to go over to this little ledge here, right up from the stairs. You're going to use your Purple Coward's Crystal, swap to your shield, press down, walk off the ledge, and then use your Estus Flask. You'll see this Purple Coward Crystal's effect that will come up on the screen as you're drinking the flask. That means you did it correctly. Press down on your D-pad and then use your dark sign and dark sign out before you end up getting sent back to the battle gazebo. And if you do it correctly, bada bing bada boom, you're at the kiln of the first flame. Congratulations guys, you have done it. And with that, that's a wrap baby. That is all the glitches, at least that I've found working that you can do in Dark Souls Remastered in 2022 and hopefully above if not and they get patched i will definitely let you know but in the meantime this was a really fun video to make and glitches and exploits are a ton of fun and i hope that you guys did learn something new from this video and use some of these glitches to help you out through the game since i do think that the infinite souls glitches is one of the coolest most insane exploits to be honest that it hasn't been patched also if you do have any trouble with these glitches or any of these glitches get patched or any other problems you might have let me know in the comment sections below, especially if you're having trouble. I would be happy to help you out. It would be my pleasure. However, I want to thank you guys so much for watching till the end of this video. If this video was helpful, do make sure to leave me with a like. Always appreciated. Also, make sure that before you leave, you go and check out Phobia's channel. He will be down in the description below. He is one godly glitching gamer and you gotta check him out. Also... Make sure that if you did enjoy this video and you want more Dark Souls glitches and exploits, make sure to hit that notification bell. Yeah, don't just subscribe. No, 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 no. Hit the notification bell. And if you have an email list, because how times are nowadays with me and my videos just getting completely flooded out with all the other subscriptions and the recommendations, make sure to hit me up on your email list so that you don't miss when my videos come out so you always have a way to know. Either way, thank you guys so much for watching until the end of this video. Make sure to check out my Dark Souls Glitches playlist. It will be up somewhere on the screen right now. And with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to glitch on. I've been Ren Creates. And have yourself a great day or night, wherever you may be.